the service? Yes, sir. Open the eyes of my heart. Scripture, turn where we've been reading from John 3, and then we will go to 1 John 5. John 3, 1 John 5. Remember now the Bible study will be this coming Saturday, 6 o'clock, so remember that and be much in prayer that the Lord would, would be with all of us and come and be with us and have a good time. Any other announcements? I generally forget some. <laughs> didn't get it somebody tell me said the subject will be tithes oh yeah the subject is going to be tithing yeah we're going to have a yeah. subject on this one tithing. yeah tithing right right you know that like where you put the money in and i get it yeah you know that, that kind of time <laughs> and uh, while you're laughing let me say something to you <laughs> that's going to be embarrassing but now brothers uh in the urinal in the bathroom the water is supposed to go in the middle of it you know, and out, not all over the wall and the floor. So, uh, uh, how about watching that? All right. Amen. You find a lot of uh, puddles, you know, and that's embarrassing for a preacher to have to bring it out here. But that maybe you'll listen to it if I say it. You know, I mean, John three, First John five. And we'll pray before we read. Father, we thank you. We love you. And we ask you to just bless each and every one of us in your love. Just have your way with us tonight. Forgive our sins. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness and let your love be made manifest in each one of our hearts and lives. We love you and we thank you and we ask you to just, Lord, have your way with us as we read your word. You come and speak to our hearts because we want to do the best that we can do and then depend upon you to be the answer to everything. We love you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. John 3. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, You must be born again. 
right, and then we'll go over to First John 5, verse 6 through 8. This is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit that beareth witness, because the Spirit is true. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. And there are three that bear witness in the earth. Excuse me, I'll read that right. There are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. Now watch it. And there are three that bear witness. One is a record, the other one is a witness. One's in heaven, the other one is here on the earth, all right? There are three that bear witness in earth, the spirit and the water and the blood, and these things agree in one. You may be seated. The Lord had his blessing to the reading of the word. Now, we've been talking about what is the new birth? You know, and you can ask most people, you can ask churches, you know, what is the new birth? And one will tell you it's this, and one will tell you it's that, and the other will tell you the other things, and, and whatever it is, it, you will uh, have many, many different uh, answers. And so is it with the people of the message or the hour that you ask them, and you listen to them, and you go to this church, and they'll teach it one way, and this church that way, and all about one thing which is the new birth but uh, you know I, I want us to think on these things and to be able to see the 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 importance of it and then you know see whether or not you have the the new birth Amen. all right and we tried to cover our Sunday in a lengthy service in the afternoon I'm sorry but it was a little lengthy but yet trying to get a point to you to show the uh, what would you call it, the overlay or whatever of Brother Branham's message and the Bible to show that it verifies that uh, your new birth begins when you repent. Right. Amen. Justification. Yep. Okay. Repentance. Right. And your new birth begins right there. Yep. All right. Now that doesn't mean that you, you, you stop. If you stop at that point, you've got a problem. Amen. But then you've got sanctification, where that you're going to the cleansing and setting aside of the vessel. All right. And then you come down to the basis of the baptism of the Holy Ghost, the birth. All right. Now, that way we want to cover it to keep it in line. Because, like I tried to explain, you, you, Brother Branham is preaching an overall message right. to uh, people, and he's trying to explain a lot of things and trying to get his message across and he said I've always on on the future home there are two times he said right. I've always taught three stages right. of grace well I, then we have to to stay with that to to uh, be able to follow it and I just wrote a couple of these off and we won't, don't have them now for the for the viewing there but on uh, paragraph 113 of the sign of the time 63 11 13 he said it's three stages of grace, but said really it's three stations. Right. You call it stations there. Right. All right. In the message called Hidden Life 55, 10, 06, three steps are dispensations. Now he's calling it a dispensation. And he says we are in the last dispensation. That's right. All right. Now, and then we've got them naturally on paragraph 78 and paragraph 86 of the future home where he said he believed in the three stages and had taught that from the beginning. Right. All right. But now when he'll say that you are born again and talking about justification, remember that you have to cover it that way because how else could you cover it? Because if he didn't say it that way, it would leave out Wesley and Luther and all of them down through there. So he has to bring it in the order to try to cover it. Amen. All right. But we believe in this day that we have to have the three stages because that's like the outer court, the inner court, right. the holy of holies. Amen. The water, the blood, the life, you know, which is the, the natural things coming forth and doing that. And uh, now, I, I stirred some thoughts Sunday afternoon there and I hope to keep stirring them to get you to think. Amen. Because I, I want to tell you the truth Amen. and all, but... You know, I tried to express to you 
uh, a little bit about the new birth and and uh, you know uh, a lot of people think the new birth is just they'll come to the altar and and they just pray through right there well that's wonderful I believe in that sure. I gave you scripture to show you that the 3,000 you know that received the baptism of the Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost now the 3,000 outside they went through the three stages right there right. Yep. but it took the disciples three and a half years to be tutored you know because there was no uh, Holy Ghost been given until it was in Jesus Christ all right? right but it took them that time and and I told you that uh, I believe that you know and I tell you now listen this is what I'm saying now you say well brother Dale when you, you say this well no I'm saying what I mean I believe you can come to the altar and pray right through to the baptism of the Holy Ghost That's right. all right because it's according to your faith Amen. according to what you can believe right all right but I believe too that most people will not do it right that it takes time it takes That's right. the doings but still no matter what now you've got to go through today three stages right. or steps Amen. or dispensations or stations or whatever you'll right. call it to be born again Amen. Yeah. all right because we're in the climax of it all to tie everything together all right so then you've got to have those three and i believe and did experience my own self so that's the one reason i believe it but i believe that that each step of the new birth is a is a station or a place or a dispensation or a time and uh, you know it's something you're going through all right a birth means coming forth in two right all right now then in doing that then sometimes it takes time i referred to brother gary atkins and we talked a little bit about it because he was about one year in his experience of of seeking after God and I you've heard me tell it thousands of times that that I was two years when I came into this message I was a uh, you know I had received what I thought was salvation when I was it uh, when I was about 18 years old and I, I believe it was a work of God and I believe God cleansed me up and took away a lot of the desires I had right. and things like that but when I saw what the prophet was saying about the baptism of the Holy Ghost, I realized I didn't have it. And for two years, now I studied the message, and you've heard me even tell of reading six books a day and listening to two tapes, you know, in one day. And it, that was not just one day of doing it. I would do it all the time. Brother Colley can witness to that because he would sit right there with me. He, I'd sit down in an old chair right in his place where he worked. and. Amen. And we'd talk for hours, and I'd read for hours, you know, and, and do it. But I was still seeking God until one day I received an experience right. that I felt agreed with what the Bible and what the prophet had been trying to describe as the experience of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Now, speaking in tongues is not the baptism of the Holy Ghost. No. Shouting is not the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Right. We read where the prophet said a lot of people shouted, and I put it back in here tonight, that a lot of people shouted and didn't get the Holy Ghost. That's a lot right. of people believed and didn't get the Holy Ghost. A lot of people spoke in tongues and didn't get it. That's All right. right? So then it, this is a difference. And now here's one I want you to think about. And uh, I gave it to Brother Joe and him to pull up. And sometimes when I do that, you look over the side, you'll see ones, and then on the other side, you'll see one A. So go ahead and pull up one A. This is one that, that comes up when I'm sitting in a study and something clicks, and I, I said, well, I better get that one. All right. So now look what he said on page 148 of the Samaritan Church Age, which is the Church Age book. All right. Look what he's talking about. Let's stop up here in the beginning. He's talking about how they had the journey and they all came through the same manna and, and ate of the same manna and was there with a smitten rock and followed the same cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night. But only two reached the promised land. That's right. Only two were true or real believers. That is correct because the word tells us that the rest died because of unbelief. And because of unbelief, they could not enter in. Hebrews 3:19. Then since that is so, and only two entered, then the rest were not true believers. What made the difference? Watch that. 
who stayed with the word right. when the hearts of the ten spies failed at Kadesh Barnea Joshua and Caleb did not stack did not excuse did not right. stagger for they believed the word and said we are more than able to take the land they knew they could because God had said it. had said I have give you the land after all those Israelites what saw the power the goodness the deliverance of God they did not enter into rest which is a type of the Holy Ghost so you can see right now that very few will ever believe all the way to receiving the Spirit of God and very few people will believe all the way to receiving the Spirit of God they may be religious they may go to church they may shout speak in tongues all kind of thing claim the message of the hour all kind of things Amen. brother Brown said that they'll they they will, will be in you know claim the to stay with the old message or something you know and try to claim the new birth of the age that we're living in right. yep. and you look around and when we get down to getting into those doctrines that I said I would get to it's been kind of slow but you know taking some of the doctrines of the message you'll find out that a lot of those doctrines were old doctrines right. way back and brother Brown said every doctrine come out of Genesis right amen yep. All right. then you'll see that a lot of those doctrines will go back to the Mormons go back to the Baptists go back to the Methodists the uh, you know the things that the, the, that will show you that that message is where it came from right amen. and see people claim it to be this great revelation you know that's come forth in the end time since the prophet brought it but he said he taught three processes three stages from the beginning that's right. all right justification sanctification amen. the baptism of the Holy Ghost that's right. that is what constitutes as we gave them their Sunday the new birth that's right all right and doing that then I want you to follow it or to, to listen to what I'm saying I believe then that very few people See, he said very few people would believe under receiving. Right. I believe very few people can believe under receiving when they come to the altar right. the first time. Yes, sir. He said, well, I went down and shook the hand of the preacher. I went down and I spoke in tongues. I cried. I shouted. Oh, that's well and good. Yeah. If it was the new birth. Amen. But if not, it was the work of the Holy Spirit. That's right. Because justification is the work of the Holy Spirit. Right. Sanctification is the work of the Holy Spirit. Right. But the baptism is the Holy Spirit. Amen. See, justification doesn't put the life of God in you. <laughs> Sanctification cleanses the vessel right. for the life of God to be placed. Yep. But right. the baptism has to burn out, according to future home, yep. all the things that are left and can place the life of God within you to be the new birth. All right. Now, in doing that, then, I want you to follow in with me and think about it that however it is if you go to the altar and receive it one time wonderful get me right that's right don't go off and say brother dale ain't saying the truth now you're lying if you do i'm telling you the best i can i give you scripture for it the prophet talks about things some people receive and pray through right at one time right yep. yeah. but mainly but basically most people don't that's right yeah, all right that's right then they have to go through the stages. But if you go through it right there at one time that night, you went through the three stages Amen. to get there. Or That's you right. didn't get it. Right, right. You didn't get the new birth if you didn't Amen. go through three stages. That's right. Well, all I've done is just come up shouting and screaming. Well, if you did, and it was because you went through the three stages, right. right. But if you only went into stage one, you can shout like everything. Sure, stage right. two, you can really shout all over the place. Right. Yeah and think you got it and that's the danger right. of the point to people is they won't go on and seek God after them right all right here's 18,492 times I said this huh? I'd rather seek God all of my life yes, sir. and get at the end of the journey he say I, you've had it all alone then to go through all of my journey not seeking God and wind up at the end of it and he say depart from me I never knew you right Right. Yeah, I want to go on with God and keep on seeking God. Amen. And I, I, you know, I, I like what Brother Brown said. He said, if I knew the rapture was coming tomorrow, right. and he said I plant potatoes, he said I just go plant potatoes. Right. That's what he 
it said. Right. You say, well, bless God, I'm not. I know people in this message that because of 77 that <coughs> they sold out, quit, and borrowed everything they could where they could live. And yep. After 77 pipes, they wound up broke and, right. and financial stress and everything else, right. and then had to live off a lot of other people from Yep. But see, it's because of what they thought. Right. <coughs> because of what they've been taught. Yep. Amen. Then for heaven to help, I don't believe we've taught it that way. Right. All right. Amen. Now, do you understand what I'm saying now? Yeah. I believe you can go all the way through at one time. I believe that. Because they did in the Bible. But I know the policies and all of those different things, they were in a journey. Right. Amen. And even, let's see now if I can get this right, and if I quote the names wrong, place it correctly, you do. <clears throat> it was it uh, two of the disciples was even preaching the gospel to a group and couldn't get the baptism of the Holy Ghost to come on to people there in the book of Acts. Right. And they had to go get somebody when they got John or one to their own, or who it, Peter or whoever it was, to come down and lay hands on them, they received the Holy Ghost. Amen. All right. Well, see, everybody thinks you just, you know, well, oh, what do you mean? I shouted, so I know I got it. Well, all right, we're going to find out after a while what the evidence is. Amen. And see if that evidence will come, well, you know, if, if it will do it. See, it doesn't matter what we do. We shout, speak in tongues. You could, now, forgive me for taking it, but you could take the life of Brother Brown and the ministry he had. And bring it down to the basis and put it in an individual and if that individual wasn't born again, he's still lost. Right. Amen. Yes, sir. That's as firm as I believe it. He said, no, because you can't do this, you can't do that. People have done it. Yeah. Right. Thank you, brother. They've done it and wound up still lost. Right. Huh? Yes, sir. Yeah, but Brother Dale, you don't understand. I, I, I know I got the Holy Ghost because I believe the message. Brother used to tell me, he said, I know I'm going to heaven because I love Brother Brown's family. Mm. Well, that's wonderful. But that was the only evidence he had. Now, I'm not going to turn down that evidence. I never told him he was lost. Right. Brother left here, you know, one time because he told me about something. I said, well, that just don't match up. He said, you told me I was lost. I didn't tell him he was lost. I told him what he was saying say didn't match right. the word. Right. Well, if he's standing here right now, tell him the same thing again. Right. Because that's, you know, if our life don't line up, that's it. Amen. See, people's done away with fruits of the Spirit as being an evidence. Right. Now, Brother Brown said the Lord corrected him, straightened him out, and lined up. Right, I agree. We'll read them. Right. But you show me where he ever done away with fruits of the Spirit. No, sir. Take that out of the Bible. You're really, right. It's gone. They ain't got a page there, you know. No. But if you do all the other and then got the fruits of the Spirit, you're getting lined up good. Amen. That's right. But if you just got the fruits of the Spirit, you're not lined up too good because the kind old priest can have it. That's right. But the kind old priest cannot receive the Word. Right. So we're going to get to that, all right? But we're going to take it easy getting to there. If I don't get there, I'll get it later. All right? So we went through explaining, or trying to explain, of the fact that in the days of Luther to just believe that was the new birth of his age. That's right. Amen. Now, he was already, we would call him a convert. He was a, what do you call him? A, 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 what's the word for it? It's not monk, is it? What's the word? He was in the monastery. He was going to, monk. he was studying, you know, uh, the cat, he was in the Catholic Church and he was studying the, the, the message, and, you know, of what they thought. And, and, and all like that, a great high-ranking monk, a great high-ranking man. Right, sure. Huh? But one day the Lord spoke to him. See, it was time. Right. That might have been okay in the days behind, but something happened, and, the, and Martin Luther said, the just shall live by faith, and he right. wrote alone on his Bible from what they said. You know, and I wrote it on mine. Just shall live by faith alone. Right. All right? But see, that was the message. Then it was required. That those who came in contact with Luther yep. to have the new birth of the age was no longer to stay with the Catholicisms right. that they were dealing with yep. as salvation. 
the penances, the the uh, you know the the offerings, the uh, the things. And you remember uh, Martin Luther was just about to die from fasting and crawling upon beds and and laying on on needles and all kind of different things and just tormenting himself to try to appease his soul. Right. But he couldn't do it. Mm-hmm. So then he wound up with the fact of the just shall live by faith. Amen. Well, now did that stop no. Martin Luther from living a good life? No. Sure he probably fasted more afterward. I'm just saying it that way. He probably afterward fasted more. He probably cried out for the sins of the people and himself more after them right. than he ever had before. Right. But he got the new birth. Man. Right. That's right. He got the new birth. Because the birth is the birth of the Word. Amen. Now that's what I believe. So I've taught it to you from the beginning, right? I believe the new birth is the birth of the Word. Amen. I didn't say the new birth is to read the Word. Or to even say I believe the Word. It's when the Word is revealed to you, quickened to you, made alive to you. That's the new birth. Jesus sowed the Word down for three and a half years into those disciples' hearts. Right. And when the Holy Ghost fell on the day of Pentecost, it quickened that word right. that they had held according to the Bible. Amen. They took the word and held it and it quickened or made it alive. That was the new birth. Then. Amen. So it would be the new birth in every age would be the birth of the word. Right. Huh? And that's where Brother Brown said people will even deny the birth of the word. I put it somewhere in my notes. They got sticking somewhere. Yeah. Okay. Listen to what he calls the, 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 the birth of the false prophets will bring false births. It's not on the computer now. True prophets will bring the word. Right. The birth of the word, Christ. Amen. All right. That's my message called You Must Be Born Again, 62, 12, 31, the morning service. All right. 62, 318, the spoken word is the original seat. Now, for the birth of the word is Christ. Not up polluted with the denominations. The early church, no denominations, just the word and spirit irrigated. Brother, God laid the word down there like that, and the Holy Spirit irrigated, and there she went. She brought four children. Amen. Huh? He says on the message, the seed is not out with the shuck, 65 to 18, referring to Mary, when that Mary denied, you know, and said, Your father and I. Right. All right. What did she deny? Pentecost took speaking in tongues. They denied the birth of the Word. That's exactly what it did. It'll take so much of it, but they won't take the rest of it. It denied the birth of the Word, just like Mary did. (coughs) See, and watch, there's no more organizations to come. So they deny the birth of the Word. You say, well, Brother Dale, I I just received... No, you've got to have somebody. There's never been anybody to receive the new birth that didn't hear the Word. Right. Show me one time, right. any yeah, word. Right. Yes, sir. I challenge that up on the basis of any word in the Bible or the right. prophet's message or anywhere. Yes, you said, well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't hear no preacher. I was reading. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you was reading. I was listening to tape. Oh, you was listening to tape. You was listening to somebody. Right. Amen. Because the seed has to come through the body, right? Right. Come on. But see, into that, then look what the prophet goes on to say. Okay, brother, pull up. Uh, number one. This is the message. How can I overcome 1963, 825 in the morning service? And look what he says. This is the age of the life, personal life of Christ, where the, the chemicals of his body, chemical of his body, what was in him first under justification. I remember the other Sunday I showed where Brother Run said the things that was in the body of Christ, of Jesus Christ came out was the ability to bring the new birth, the water, the blood, the life. Right. right. Remember that? Tie it together now. Right. What was in him? First under justification, the bat- justification, the water baptism. Second under the new birth of Wesley, sanctification which cleanses and and thirdly, under the baptism of the Holy Ghost, putting the vessel in the door. So he calls Wesley's message in his birth. The sanctification was a birth. Amen. And like I told you the other day, Wesley come along believing Martin Luther's message came to America to preach to the heathen. Found out he needed to be converted himself. Right. Why? Because God was moving into another realm right. to bring sanctification. All right. Amen. So then in that age then, 
If you said, I believe Luther, well, how come you don't believe what Wesley taught? And we're not talking about the, the wrong things that they talk. We're right. talking about the truth. Right, right. Uh -huh. So is it when Azusa Street came with the baptism of the Holy Ghost? And Brother Brown calls that a great prophet, 464 right. of the seal book. Right, amen. A great prophet came. You said, no, that Brother Brown, no, no, read the book. Then at the end of the age, the messenger would arrive. Right. Then the Holy Ghost is the prophet of God. Amen. Oh, yeah. I remember when I was up at Jeffersonville, you know, years ago, started about 68, going there, and, and they'd say, who's to take over and who's the leaders? Who's, who's the prophet now? Yeah. Well, Billy Paul got up one day and said, I want to read you something. But around says right here, the baptism of the Holy Ghost is the prophet. Right. All right. So I was glad he'd done that. Yeah. All right, now watch. We've been over these, but I want to keep reminding you. Look at number two. Questions and answers on the seal, 63, 324 in the morning service. You see, each one of those ages is only taking a dip into the Holy Spirit. Justification is the work of the Holy Spirit. Sanctification is the work of the Holy Spirit. But the baptism is the Holy Spirit. Look at it. That's the reason it took a prophetic prophet to come down. Read what it says. No messenger to the age. Who was that? Zeus' Street. Because the Holy Ghost came Himself in His fullness of the baptism. Then at the end of the age is when the prophet right. came on the scene. Amen. The baptism of the Holy Ghost that came forth on the day of Zeus' street was the baptism of the Holy Ghost right. just exactly like the 3,000 in the book of Acts. Amen. Not like the 120 in the upper room. I've explained that. Right. They were tutored three and a half years. The other only heard one message right. and received the new birth. All right. Now so where are we putting it all at? You look at the next one, the third seal, which is 1963. 320. But then if the Pentecostal message was the last message which justified the sanctification the baptism of the Holy Ghost, the last three messages, the last three church ages, forms the complete birth. Right. Right. Then he goes on to explain, read it off there while I'm talking. He's explaining that what comes from Jesus' body right. is the very substance that brings us to a new birth. Right. Water, blood, Spirit, Amen. life, right. right? Right. All right. So now, where is it going to? See, then we firmly believe in that each age having the baptism of the Holy Ghost, all down through to all seven church ages, and each one of those were born into the kingdom of God. Yep. All right. And then it's to return in. It was to return back in the day of Azusa Street. Now I'm running a long line across, all right? But to come to where it would require three stages or three steps of grace to be in the body. See, it's returned back like it was in the book of Acts. All right, Azusa Street brought it back like it was in the book of Acts. You say, well, Brother Dan, I don't like that because Azusa Street was... Yeah, they were Trinitarian. That's exactly right. Most people don't even know that. The one this doctor never started about 1912 or 14, somewhere in there. They were Trinitarian, but that don't make no difference. God winked at her ignorance. Right. And he calls it the prophet. Right. You know what he said? There was no messenger to the age. Then he'll tell you that there was a one-eyed black man was the messenger of that age. Right. Right. Yep. Amen. Yep. But there's reasons for those things. We've been over that in all we're doing. All right? The new birth has always been the birth of the Word. Amen. Now, now we, we get into today when you got artificial insemination or what you call that, you know, artificial pregnation, but that don't have nothing to do with the Word of God. Right. Every birth is the same. It doesn't matter if they take it out of this woman, take it out of that, or that man and put it in another woman and she gives birth. That don't make no difference. It's all still the same. It took the life from the man, the, the egg from the woman, and it produces a birth. And no matter what they do or whatever you say about it, it comes out to be the same. Every birth is the same. Amen. Brother Ren said, whether it's in a pink decorated hospital or yeah. you know, or whatever else. Right. It's all the same. The same thing happens. What? Water comes forth. Blood comes forth. 
Right? Amen. And then the baby comes forth. Amen. And just because the baby comes doesn't mean it's alive. It's got to have the birth of life or the breath of life breathed into its nostrils right. to become a living soul. Right. That's what the new birth is, the birth of the word where God has breathed into our nostrils. Yep. I read it to you there where he said it, that they, they, they irrigate, they lay that word down and God come over and irrigate yep. it. Because that's what it takes to make a birth. All right. Yeah. <laughs> and that would bring forth to complete birth in this day. Now we go to where Brother Brown was talking about what the birth of the word. Jesus sowed the word, the seed, for the new birth to come. You know, Brother Ryan said John preached justification, Jesus preached sanctification. Right, sure. We've been preaching this for 40 years, Lord, and know a lot of the quotes. Amen, that's right. A lot of you heard it for 40 years, you ought to know what I'm fixing to say next. Hallelujah. You say, well, no, don't you? Sanctification is the sowing of the seed. Right, amen. That's right, amen. Yep. He said, that's when you're begotten. Right. But then the word was quickened. Right. All right? Then coming by the prophet's message, look what he would say then. Go ahead, brothers. Number four. You know these, but we're just putting them in here. A lot of people don't know them. For the message, Christ the mystery of God revealed, 63, 7, 28. Look what he said. What is the new birth then? Because you read the other, if Christ's life in you, look, Christ in you makes him the center of the life of the revelation. See, Christ's life in you makes him the center of the revelation. Christ in the Bible makes the Bible the complete revelation of Christ. Christ in you makes you the complete revelation of the whole thing. See what God is trying to do. What is the new birth then, you'd say? Well, Brother Brown, what is the new birth? It's the revelation of Jesus Christ personally to you. That's right. Amen. See, not you joined the church, you shook a hand, you done something different, you said a creed, you promised to live by a code of rules, but Christ the Bible... He is the word that was revealed to you. And no matter what anybody says, what takes place, listen, it's Christ. Pastor, priest, whatever it might be, it's Christ in you. It's the revelation that the church was built upon. Amen. Right. But, but, but Brother Dale, we, 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 you're, you're taking away all that I ever had to believe that I saved. Well, good. Right. That means you, you, you've got a problem and you can do something about it. Right, amen. Right. And then you won't wind up at the end of the road saying, I've all of my life, I've kept this as my evidence. And now I find out it's not true. You remember the woman that Brother Brown was talking about? How she taught Sunday school, she'd done all kind of things. Right. Said, but she come to her dying bed. Mm, that's right. And said she was dying. He said her real soul come up before her. Mm, right. And she said, I'm lost. Told the preacher, said, you've lied to me. Yeah. I'm lost. Yep. I said, give her another hypo. In other words, shut her up. Because right. the preacher didn't know how to pray her through. Right. So he surely didn't want to pray for her no more. I'm just honest. Go on. So then what is it? What is the new birth? The revelation of Jesus Christ personally to you. Amen. Amen. All right. Now, has he ever revealed himself to you? Amen. That's right. Or are you just taking what somebody else said? That's right. Mm, that's it. Right. You're taking what you've been taught. Yep. Well, Brother Dale, and I realize that. Just, I sat back there thinking one ago. And I was really kind of talking to the devil <laughs> that, you know, for over a hundred years, we call it Zeus Street. Right. Up to, you know, we're unpiced a hundred years, right? Right. And you know, the devil has planted a seed in the people's mind. It's hard to get that destroyed. Right, man. Sure. Because that seed was planted of speaking in tongues, shouting, crying, doing this, that, or the other. Right. Until people are dependent upon that and will not depend upon what God says. Right. Right. That's right. Right? Right. So then if for one time tonight, after a hundred years, I don't mean you've been listening to it, but I mean for a hundred years, you you and I have right. faced those things that were brought from a hundred years ago. Sure. 
Because every one of us in our mind, in one way or the other, has always wondered what the evidence of the Holy Ghost is. Right? Right. Come on, you didn't wonder about it? Right. Man. No, I know what it is. I shout it. Well, glory, hallelujah. I hope you're right. That's all I can say. Right. So if you get mad at me now, forgive me. Not for telling you the truth, but forgive me for making you mad at me. But if I can make you mad enough, you'll get down to studying a little bit. That's right, amen. You'll dig in and find out whether I'm right or wrong. Amen. That's right. But my daddy says, and my mama says, and my uncle, that ain't got nothing to do with you. You ain't going to heaven on daddy's religion or mama's religion That's or right. uncle's religion or grandma's religion. That's right. That's right. Well, you're throwing off on my kin folks. No, I'm not. You are. Because right. you're finally admitting it. I mean, I love my mother to all heaven. Done everything I could for her while she was alive. But I know my mama could be lost too. And that's what a lot of people don't want to realize. Yep. If my mother wasn't born again, she was lost. Right. If my daddy wasn't born again, she was, he was lost. That's right. Well, I know my mom was there. Well, okay. Why? What's your reason for it? Come on, I know a meddling. What's your reason for thinking your kin folks are saved? Yeah. I like what the old man used to say. We used to old timey folks said, "You've got to be born again." <laughs> saved or not oh I don't like that well I wasn't in him right I only know about myself amen, right. Right. amen. folks so you didn't come through like I did when I was sitting there praying and studying and saying Lord with the book in my hand saying this man says there'll be false prophets mm. what if he's one Come on, brother. Right. That's what I asked the Lord. Yeah. Oh, bless God. I would never do nothing like that, Brother Dale. Well, okay. All right. You're not me. <laughs> Forgive me. You're not me. But you know what? I got my answer. Right. right. And that was in the day that I wasn't born again. I would ask him. I would lay the Bible and the books down and say, Lord, what if this man is a false prophet? Right. Because he said, and you said in your word, he'd deceive the very elect if it was possible. Amen. And I said, I got a quote here where that he says, that matter of fact, he'd get the bride so confused he'd have to cut the work short. Yeah. I can quote. Yeah. But Brother Ryan said that one day. Right. Amen. Huh? You know what he'd say? How many of you know what I'm fixing to say? You've heard it thousands of times. All he would ever answer me is say, what does the word say? That's the only answer I'd ever get. But you know what? That was the right answer. That was the greatest answer I could have ever gotten. He could have come down personally and appeared to me and talked to me and told me all these things. And that wouldn't have been as good as what he was kept on saying. He'd say, what does the word say? Okay, I'll go back and read some more. Then I'll ask you a question again. And I got the same answer. Yep. But you see, I believe in the birth of the Word. Amen. I believe all babies are born because of all babies being birthed exactly alike. You know? Amen. You know, babies born. You got to have a mama. You got to have a daddy. Yep. But one way or the other, where it be, what do you call it? What's those words? Doing it by proxy, whatever you want to do it all by. You know, don't make no difference. You still got one. But do you see what I'm talking about? What is the new birth? The birth of the Word. The birth of the Word. The revelation of Jesus Christ personally to you. Amen. Now, it's not, I won't call her name, but 
She came to the house one time and said, I'm going to get baptized because my husband wants me to be. I said, I won't baptize you. You can forget it. So we talked on for a little while, and she said that again, and I said, look, I ain't lost, you know, and all of this stuff. I kind of got a little bit of thought coming to me. I said, you know it's the truth. She said, yes. I said, okay, we'll do it now. Right, we'll go do it now. She said, I wouldn't have baptized her. I wouldn't have made no difference. Right. Yeah, but that was, I want to honor her. That's good. That's an honor, but, you know, this is not followed mom and daddy. Now, come on, folks. This right. is not following Brother Dale. Right. Amen. If you followed Brother Dale, that's like a brother come here years ago. Said, I come from California to come out here to the Lula thing. I said, first off, that's where you goofed up. Right. Yep. As far as I was concerned, he was stayed in California. Right. Amen. Because he goofed up by thinking they were some Lula thing. Right. But that's, that's all right. I don't think there's no Lula thing. I, if, it, if this ain't it, I want to keep this until that comes. All right, All right. you find it, you find that. <laughs> we'll go with that, but I'm going to keep this until that comes, okay? Because right. I've, I've had a good time, you know, in all my life, and it's always compared. And, and, and my new birth has always brought me to that place. Right. Why? Now, watch what the prophet goes on to say, number five, Patmos Vision, 1960, 1204 in the evening service. You've heard this one a lot of times, right? Now ask God to while we're talking on revelation, ask him to give you a revelation of this. For it can only be known by revelation. And you can only be saved by revelation. Right. Yep. Look at it. You can only be saved by revelation. You have a knowledge of it intellectually, but you can't be saved until it's revealed to you. No man can call Jesus the Christ only by the Holy Ghost. Yep. That's what the Bible says. No man can say Jesus is the Christ until he has received the Holy Ghost he might say the pastor says so, the Bible says so. Them are truths. The church says so. That is true. But you don't know yourself until the Holy Ghost has revealed it to you. And it's become in you. No matter, and no man can call Jesus the Christ only by the Holy Ghost. Not by knowledge, not by intellectual. Amen. That's right. So it only can be a personal revelation to you. It's not Brother Branham brought the message. I thank God for the message. Right. But it's the Holy Ghost. Amen. I like the way Brother Richard Wilson said it. The Bible says what the Spirit has to say. Right. That's it. What the Spirit has right. to say. Right. Thank you. I like that. That's right. Amen. The Holy Spirit. Well now, Brother Daly, a lot of people went off and said the Holy Spirit. Yep. Yeah. A lot of people were anointed with the Holy Ghost and went off and done a lot of things too. Right, right. And come up lying like crazy and saying God told them there's three lords and two lords and, and two souls and all kind of doctrines. But that don't make no difference. That's right. I like what Jesus said one day, wasn't it? He said, What's that to thee? Follow thou me? Right. right. Amen. Yeah, I like that point. I ain't trying to get you to follow me. I like what he said. Right. Let's follow him. Right. Amen. You right. say, Are you following Brother Brown? I believe what Paul. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. Right. And you know what? I've never found Paul off of following Christ. Have you? Right. And you know, after 40-something years of studying this message, I've never found Brother Branham off of following Christ. Right. Have you? Right. I'd be glad to listen to you if you have. Oh, he said this and he said that. Yeah, and what do you say? Yeah. But now listen, you can only be saved by revelation. Right. And it's a revelation of God's Word. That's right. And the prophet, we gave you the quote there a minute ago where true prophets will bring true births. Why? Because they'll bring you the word. Amen. But false prophets will bring false births. That's right. You ever seen a false birth in a cow? Only man that really knows what he's talking about can tell you where it's false or true. Because that old cow, she'll start getting fat and she'll start just being mud fat and she'll look like she's as pregnant as everything in the world could be. And the man that really knows and walk up and punch her in the side, he said, that ain't nothing but a false birth. And you know what'll happen one day? You go, and out it goes, and you ain't got nothing but a skinny old cow. Because they can push the side to see where the calf's in there. False birth. Look around the world today and tell me there's not a world full of false births. Now, we're not talking about natural, right? We're talking about spiritual. Amen. It doesn't matter where you're Hindu, Muslim, 
whatever it is, it's all false birth. Right. Why well, it all comes from the same core. Mm-hmm. Right? Right, right. All right. But get on with it. Yeah. Each age received the word of the age. The Holy Spirit made that word alive, gave them with that age the new birth. Now let's go to another point then on it. For just for tonight. What is the evidence of the new birth? Now, if it's right that you've got water, blood, and life, then remember that the baby's not alive in the mother's womb. I'm glad the prophet brought that. No, yes it is. It's wiggling and twitching. Yeah, it is. And so is every animal that's in its mama. Same thing. It's twitching and moving. Every animal, every birth, is that, that baby inside of there is twitching and moving. That's right. You say, well, but they can show you where they're sucking their thumbs and crying. And, yep. And show the dog. Right? right? You see, yeah, but you ain't never seen them where they're trying to kill them, you know, and, and cause them to lose the baby. Yeah, and they do the same thing with a dog. Cat. Whatever. Because it's not alive. Right. It's alive in the point that it's moving and, and blood and etc. Right. Disconnected from the mama or the from the, the uh, umbilical cord and it's dead. Right. Huh? But see water, blood, baby. And then life comes into the baby. Just because the baby's born doesn't mean that it's alive. Stillborn babies are born every day, right? right. Hmm. So you got to spank it or do something. You gotta have, something's got to happen to it. All right. But now get the difference of what I'm talking about. When we talk about evidence, everybody wants to find some way, some fronting, something they've done as an evidence. Right. That's the spanking of the baby. See, why not get the baby here and the life will prove whether or not it's a baby. Right? right. right? Amen. The life will yep. prove it. Yep. Right. It'll make manifest. That's right. It, because it's, it's got a birth. Alright? But now, we talk about then fruits of the Spirit. The right. people say, well, I, I believe I'm saved because I got love, joy, peace, goodness in my heart. That's good. But the kind old priest had those things yeah. too. That's right. yeah. Now I believe, just like I said a while ago, I believe in one God. Amen. Always have. How do I check a doctrine? How do you check a doctrine, Brother Dale? By my new birth. My new birth is based upon one God. Right. It can't be based upon a trinity because you wouldn't know which one saved you. Right. What do you mean I saved by that? I said, ah, oh, come on. It's all based upon one God. Right. Three manifestations of the same God. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost makes one God. Justification, sanctification, and baptism of the Holy Ghost makes a new birth. Right. Water, blood, and spirit brings the baby to life in the thing. Outer court, inner court, holy of holies. Right. Brother Brown said, always keep those threes running right. Uh-huh. Big man said, oh, I'm talking about big boy. Yeah. Said on my porch one time, he said, life comes to the fourth stage. I said, life comes to the third stage, my brother. I said, I don't know what you're talking about. You're reading the prophet's message and got into adoption. But you've got to have the life here to get something to where you can adopt it. Right, right. No, Brother Brown. I said, well, you better get ready because I'm going in the house. Mm. Brother Moe was just dying life. There was this guy, would, he went for it and said, if I pound most of you know him. Uh, and he, you know, he was driving this point. I said, I'm going in the house to get my books. You better get what you're talking about. We don't talk what the Bible and its prophet said. So when I came back out, I laid it all down. Well, he quit quieting down. Forget it. Because he said he wasn't going to convert me. 
because it's water, blood, and spirit. Adoption goes into water, blood, spirit, and the word carrying you up to stature of perfect man. That's adoption, right? Four stages, but it's only three stages to the birth. We done read it there a while ago. The third three messages of the last three ages completes the birth. All right. So you can do all of these things that we talk about and still not be born again. That's right. Amen. I gave them to you there the other day. And look what, let's see. Be number six, Brother Joe. And Brother Anderson. We went through this and <coughs> go through it through each age. God has allotted so much word. And the church it gets it all confused up. Then he sends a prophet among them and vindicates the word. It's just like any other time we speak today and see that we speak today and say the Methodist. Luther says you believe. That's all you have to do. You're justified by faith. Believe. Many said they believed and didn't have it. Yep. All right. And it's your prophet. We know that. Along came Wesley Wood with what called second work of grace, sanctification, all that shouts and they're sanctified has got it. Many shouted and didn't have it. Yep. Long come the, come the Pentecost said all that speaks with tongues has got it. Many spoke with tongues and didn't have it. Huh? Along come Christian science and says it's love, the fruit of the Spirit. Many of them show fruits of the Spirit and don't have it. Now you know what he connects that to when he gets to that point. He said what about the kind old priest? Who dedicated you babies? Who loaned you money when you needed all this? Who took care of you? Who fed you? And said, all Jesus ever done is just took them, planted a rope, and run them out of the temple. Right. Yep. Right. You know what he's getting to, Amen. right? Yes, but look. Number seven. What shall we do with Jesus called Christ 64, 126? The evidence, as I said the other day, we try to place evidence. Luther said, believe and walk out. The devil believes too. Wesley said, shout, you got it. But found out he didn't. That doesn't mean Wesley and him didn't have the new birth. You know what he's saying. Come on. Pentecost said, speak in tongues and you got it. They didn't. Christian science says, love, you got the fruit of the Spirit, but they haven't. They deny the divinity of Jesus Christ. What is the evidence of it? When that spirit that's in you can punctuate every promise with an amen. Now that does away with all the shouting, all of this and all of this out of the other. All that's well and good. We believe in every bit of it. Because that's just your nature. And Brother Branham even made a statement this way one time. He said, where you're born again at does have a lot to do with you even after you're born again. He said, if you're born again in an emotional church, you'll be emotional. Yep. He said, if you're born again in kind of a formal type of church, he said, you'll be that way. Right. Now, if you want that quote, I'll be glad to find that. Look, what is the evidence of it? When that spirit that's in you can punctuate every promise with an amen. And God will confirm it. That's it. Okay. See, so you got God confirming it. Right. You believing it, right? That's exactly the way it was with Jesus Christ. Now look what he said. You read it. So in Jesus Christ, what was it? The Spirit of, in Him punctuated every word and then God confirmed it. All right? Yes. They had, they had more fruits of the Spirit. They had all kinds of evidences. You can pin any evidence down to anything. You can't, excuse me, pin any evidence down to anything. But God himself manifesting his word. That's, right. That's the only true evidence that there is that you are you're a Christian. How can you be a Christian when I go on, let me just say some more quotes that are laying there if you want them. Brother Brown said, How can God deny his word? Right. Yeah. <coughs> he said, Can God deny his own word? Right. He said, Well then how can the Spirit of God be in you and deny his word? Right, amen. He's playing around with it, right? right? Okay, go ahead to the next one. And Jesus came and called 64, 213. Who has the fruit of the Spirit there? And he's talking about, you know, not the fruit of the Spirit, not speaking in tongues and shouting. You said then, Brother Branham, what is the evidence? What is the evidence? 
the vindication of the word in the hour. The vindication of the word in the hour. Read all in between there and come down. Look, Luther had the evidence of his age, Wesley of his age, Pentecost of his age, but we're in another age. Those things are good, but like the baby has got a finger and eye and a nose, but after a while he has to become a human being. He has to become a, a mature child to then be born have a soul, body, spirit, and can move around. Tying it all together where we're at, all right? Look at the next one. What is the evidence? Message in when their their eyes were opened, they knew him, 1964, 416. But what is the evidence of a believer? That will but believe the identified word of the hour. Mm -hmm. It's always been that way. Yep. Okay. People get it scrupled up in all kinds of traditions and religion and denominations and education and so forth. But God comes along with his word and confirms it, confirms it for the hour. That's the evidence. That's right. All right, then. Brother Dale, then I believe Brother Brown's message. That means I've got the evidence. Let me put it this way. To believe Brother Brown's message is wonderful. But do you believe Luther's message? Right. That's right. Or the just shall live by faith? True. Do you believe Wesley's message? Now we're not talking about the fanaticism that went with it and all the false doctrines right. and right. the Trinitarianisms and the garbage, right? Amen. Come on. Amen. Luther taught a message of the just shall live by faith and that's Bible. Right. That was the only way in the body. Right. And you come along today and say, I don't believe what Luther taught and what Wesley taught. <clears throat> but I got the new birth. I believe the message of the age. I can prove it to you. Mm -hmm. I can prove to you your anointed ones. What you're right. Right. Come on, you buddy. sure won't like that. That's right. But that's as truth as I can be. But only anointed ones will follow that line of thought. Right. Anointed ones will deny other ages as to having the new birth and try to base everything upon them having the new birth. Okay. Now look what he says. What is the evidence of a believer? We covered that. Look what he says now, broken sister. 1964, 726, the evening service. The day I was talking with a good friend, Dr. Lee Vale, who is present now, and he's quite a theologian. And so we usually have some, have some pretty good discussions on the scripture, verse Mark. He asked me one time what I thought about the initial evidence of the Holy Ghost. Was it speaking in tongues? It's been many years ago. I said, no, can't see that. He said, neither do I. I said, though I have been taught that. He said, what would you think would be an evidence? I said, the most perfect evidence I can think of is love. So we got to talking on that. And I thought that sounded pretty good. So I just held that, held that if a man has got love. But one day the Lord in a vision straightened me out. Now this is your prophet, okay? He said that the evidence of the Spirit was those who could receive the Word. Neither love nor speaking in tongues, but it's receiving the Word. Right. So that's the Holy Ghost giving you a clear understanding of the Word, right? right? Okay. Then he goes down, the Holy Ghost is upon you. He shall reveal these things. I have taught you and show you things to come. So there is the genuine evidence of the Holy Ghost. He has never told me anything wrong yet. That it's the evidence of the Holy Ghost. If he who can believe the word, you can receive it. 
Because Jesus never said, when the Holy Ghost has come, you'll speak with tongues. Now show me in the Bible, read it. He never said the Holy Ghost come, you'd do any of those things. But he said, he will take these things of mine and show them to you and will show you things that is to come. So there is the genuine evidence of the Holy Ghost according to Jesus himself. Hmm? According to Jesus himself. All right. So now where does that put us? Questions and answers. 1964, 823, the evening service. What is the evidence that a person is really filled with the Holy Ghost? Now that would have been questions and answers. Let's see, broken sister would have been 728. This is 823. So this is the same year a little later on. What is the evidence that a person is really filled with the Holy Ghost? John 14, 26. He said, when the Holy Ghost has come, see, he will show you things to come. See, he'll be a, he'll perfect it, perfect it, man, maids won't do it. And he is the word. And when the Holy Ghost has come, he will identify himself in you with the scripture. And that is the true sign that the Holy Spirit is in you because it is the word. Now look, what if you spoke with tongues? I just want to ask that. Jesus said when the Holy Ghost come, what he would do. But what if you spoke with tongues, jumped up and down, shouted and everything else, and then come to the Word? And I'll tell you the baptism of prove to you by the Scripture as I have that the baptism using the titles Father, Son, and Holy Ghost is absolutely a misunderstanding in the Scripture. Nobody was ever baptized like that. You go ahead and hang with it anyhow. Could you tell me the Holy Spirit in you would do a thing like that? How can it deny its own word? Right. Amen. Simple language, right? right? Amen. How can it die, deny its own word? That's right. Let's see. One more. Well, let's leave that off. We won't go on no further. We just stop right there on the evidence. As what? Whether or not the Spirit in you right. agrees with the Word. Damn it. Right. Now, what if it agrees so long and quits? Now, that's not what he's talking about, right? No. Whether or not it keeps on agreeing with the Word. Right, amen. Right. That's it. Now, Jesus agreed with every word. So now, if I tore down your doctrine or thought tonight of what you believe the new birth is, then you need to do something about it. Right. Man. And getting mad at me won't help it. That's right. Man. But you know, that's what it is. Ain't nobody gets mad at Jesus for saying it. You know, you ever notice that? Yeah. You notice that people, you can read what Brother Brown says to them and they won't get mad at him. They get mad at you for reading it. Yeah. You're a smart addict. You found it. Found it. I found what he said. Right. Yeah. Why don't you get mad at him? Why don't you get upset with him? Why aren't you upset with God? Right. God's what it said. I've always said it this way, and I don't mind saying it. If there is a God, that's not a question on my end. I don't have a problem with it. But if there is a God, and He can't keep His Word straight, then what are we going to look for? Or what are we going to talk about? But if He can keep His Word straight, and it's been straight all the way through, and the birth has always been the same. No matter what age it was in, the new birth was the same. It was the birth of the Word of that age. And so is it today. Today you can't depend upon just, I repented of my sins. That's wonderful. I got sanctified. I quit all these things and all that. That's wonderful. Amen. But we got to have the baptism of the Holy Ghost. If we don't have the baptism of the Holy Ghost, we're still in a lost condition. Right. Amen. Well, now, wait a minute. You said there's, you gave a Sunday word. You're talking about, yeah, that's right, brother. Right? said you have eternal life. It just believes it. But then you put together all the other things of where he said 
where he said even at sanctification you're just begotten you're not even converted yet that was the next quote that was fixing to come up he said you're not even converted yet nope. he told Peter he said after thou art converted strengthen the brethren if it was only the shouting the screaming the crying the believing then why did Jesus have to die because the disciples had all of it yep. but that's where you wouldn't like to point that there was Judas Iscariot and you know the Judas Iscariot according to the church age book and according to the prophet giving you the scripture there his name was written in heaven that's right. because your name is written when you're a believer Come on, I can show you that because you know it. Judas was right there with him until the Holy Ghost entered into him. Right. And then he went out and done what he'd done. But you know what I like about him? You know what I like about Judas? He found out what he'd done. He found out he had denied the Lord Jesus. Yep. And he had enough gumption to go hang himself. And yet we sat down in church and hollered glory, hallelujah, I believe the prophet's message, shouting and everything else is all it is. You, Brother Dale, you just don't believe it because you're an old die-high Baptist. Hey, we Baptists used to shout a little bit too, you know. You better understand Brother Randall come from it. Yeah. I've been to foot washings, communion in a Baptist church. How I many of you ever went to them, hardly? Brother Dick and them went one time and they had a communion and then had the foot washing. Didn't have no water in the pan. Had a towel. I'm not throwing off on that church. Come on. That's people. That's human beings. That's just like me and you. But what I'm saying is, you see how far we drift away from the Word. Right. Huh. It just, see, when you do that, and after, like I said, hundreds, a hundred years, I said, I thank you. I said, Satan, for 100 years over, you've been teaching people about these evidences and signs and shoutings and crimes and, and believings and all that. And God has been trying to get us to get to the birth of the Word. Right. Brother Dale, I just don't have a new birth to say that it was on a certain day. Well, I believe that if you'll ask God, He'll speak to you about it and give it to you. Right. And you'll know it. Hmm? And I was asked Sunday, how do you know, Brother Dale, what you got was the new birth? You know the best thing I can say to you? Because I've shouted, I've cried. I ain't never spoken to them. It's because I didn't ever try to, I guess. But you know what? I've always believed if there is a God that He'd be able to keep His Word straight enough yep. to word it if I believed it. He would come to that word and honor it. I never saw great lights flashing, great things happening when I received the new birth. My wife and I received at the same time. I was crying, yes. I've done that before. I saw God when I was 11 years old in a church. I never counted that as salvation. I saw a lot of things when I was in the Baptist church. You know, we believed in praying for the sick and stuff back then. And I tried to live a good life. I told you about it. And the old deacon standing there looking at the women come out of the off of a bus that they was coming to sing for us one night. And this old man there was 65. Or he wasn't an old man. He was 65. <laughs> And then they're just looking at him. I, I just looked him straight in the eye and I said, that ain't right. You're not supposed to look like that. This is my brother-in-law's daddy. 
I said, you're not supposed to look like that. He said, the Bible said, look on God's heritage. I said, it don't say lust after it. I didn't play back there. I sat in the deacon board and told them, I said, brother, there's something wrong around here. I said, there's more money due. I take it up and count it. Do I know what's coming in? There's more money due tied out of this deacon board than there is coming in that offering plate upstairs. Because I believe what God said. He said, try me and see. I believed it. I still believe his word. Amen. I feast on his word. I've been in a revival then ever since I come in this message. That's right. But did you see something like, no, no. It was a knowledge. And I know that ain't going to go over with most people because they got to have more than that. You know what Brother Brown said? God knows what you need. Now, you mind if I quote him some? He said, he knows what you need. And he said, if you want to speak in tongues, you just lay there long enough and he'll let you speak in tongues. He said, because he's a good God. Now, he wasn't against crying and shouting and doing things, and was he? But you see, all at once, the word that I had studied so long just began to unveil. Come on. Amen. And I seen Christ. Right. Amen. Right in His Word. Right. I seen it then for myself. Amen. Before then, I was taking what Brother Branham had to say about it. <laughs> right. Sure. Yeah. But when that happened, Hallelujah. I had something on my own. Yeah. Amen. Well, you think everybody? No, no, because see, it's according to your emotional system. I explained that a while ago. It's according to your emotional system. And like I said, you you want these quotes? Call me, whatever. Brother Brown said, God's a good God. He said, He knows you want to speak in tongues. He said, You just lay there long enough and He'll let you. That's right. Yep. Hmm? But all of that doing, we read it. That don't have to be the Holy Ghost. But the Holy Ghost can't deny His Word. Now let me put one more with it. I didn't bring the quote. But Brother Brown said, the way you know whether a preacher's right or not is whether he's staying with the Word. Continually staying with the Word. He said, then, you just check out what he's saying. I'm just paraphrasing it, but just, you just check what he's saying and see if it's right. Because he can't tell you something wrong. Brother Hill, I heard you say, now that's mistakes I make as human, I'm sorry. But you can't deny the word. So you check the preacher by the word. That's what I was asking God. This man says, Prophets will come. What if he's one of them? Because you know, I go down the street a while there and somebody will say, Prophets will come. And they're false. And I know that one was because he's off the word. But only the Holy Ghost can put the word together. That's what I love about him. Only the Holy Ghost can put the word together. You know what I've been called an intellectual Baptist because of that? And see, you wouldn't know what that meant if you hadn't been there and studied. And been. It just simply meant that I had taken the letter of the word and figured it out. Brother Brown said, you better leave them Baptists alone. He said, they'll tie you up in that scripture. Because you see, they'd take it and read it right out of the word to you. And you can fall over and shout and glory, hallelujah, all you want to. It ain't going to change them. We just stay right there with the word. It is also written. Let's come on. Right. What is the evidence of the baptism of the Holy Ghost? Whether or not the Spirit of God in you agrees with the word. 
And if the Spirit of God is in you, He will always agree with the Word. Right, right. He will never deny His Word. That's why Brother Brown said, if you could find it in this Bible, go before God and said, if He won't fulfill it, you can call Him a liar. Now that's how strong He believed in the Word. Jesus sowed. It took him three and a half years right. to sow down enough scripture into those people for them to get born again. Now that's something. Man. It took him three and a half years, let's say, to be able to to get the people to a place. What about it? What do we got? One nineteen. Red book. One nineteen in the red book. Anybody have a need? The only thing I say to you is one thing. If you don't know whether or not you have the baptism of the Holy Ghost, never stop seeking. That's right. That's right. It ain't important who's the president. And listen, the other day, Brother Brown, the way he started out talking, we was on the tape, and the way he started out talking, it was just like he was going to name it. He said, who's going to be the president? And I thought, he's fit and tell them who's going to be the president. <laughs> and you know what he said? He said, even if I could tell you, he said the whole religion, the whole world would flock at the door and all the newspapers would print. William Branham said so and so is going to be president. I thought, oh God. There stood a prophet that could have told him. He could have told him who was going to be that. God would have given him. But he could stand there and preach the word and it wouldn't even be put in a newspaper that so many people got saved and so many people got healed. The dead was raised. Never was put in a newspaper. But he said if you could tell who was going to be president, he said your name would be in the paper. It would be printed all over. What about it? I told him one time in a minister's meeting, I said, you want to know who's going to be president? I'm going to tell you or something like that. Everybody do it. Where was we at? Fellowship meeting, I guess. Yeah. And boy, everybody got to look. I said, you want me to tell you? I can tell you who's going to be the president. Everybody got real quiet and everything. I said, because the Bible says I put in kings and I take out kings. Amen. The one God wants in there is going to be the one. They all seen what I'm talking about. He's the one that knows. Go ahead. Right, 119. 119. Anybody have a need? Blessed assurance. Jesus is mine.
brother were this ring in hand, or somebody had stole it, or whatever has happened to it, that it will be returned. Because we ask him, we believe in him. He said, ask him, he shall receive. We don't want to substitute. We want the real. We thank you. We commit it to you now in Jesus' name.
prayed the other day that somebody was preaching and said, Brother Raymond said it. He said, if God tells you, ask God for something. He says, no. He said, that's the greatest answer you could never get. That's right. He said, but, but no, 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 I want it. He says, no. Because you see, he knows what you do with what you're asking. That's right. Those people asked Brother Branham, said, where's an oil well? He said he picked up that they were going to, they told him, oh, we'll do this, and we'll give them money, we'll do that. But he realized they wouldn't do it. He wouldn't tell them. He said they went out and they dug wells around, got a little bit of sputter, sputter, you know. Somebody come in that didn't, he said, I knew where the oil was. Somebody come in that had nothing to do with the church or anything, sat down and hit the gusher. He said, because they had the wrong attitude. Yep. That's right. I told you when we was over in the Philippines, brothers came to me one night and I was already scheduled, they had me scheduled to preach. Brother Ernie went one way and I went the other way. We was trying to cover a lot of churches, we did. The brother Ernie and Brother Vernon came and said, we want to talk to you. I said, you're scheduled to preach on Friday night over Brother so-and-so's. And I said, okay, yeah. All right. I didn't know where in the world that was or who he was. You know. But I said, okay, I'm sorry. But I said, we want to tell you one thing. He said, we want to try to get people, they want to try to, he wants to try to get people together and take up a lot of money. Because he knew, see, we wouldn't take it. You know. They want to get a lot of money because he wants to buy a bunch of goats. Said, because there's a lot of money that the Germans left here in the Philippines. Tons and tons of gold that they'd captured. And the, said he wanted to get some goats to sacrifice to the gods. Mm. to try to find in favor to find that gold mm. that's the thing going <laughs> no. I ain't going brothers thank you for telling me they said well we knew you wouldn't but we had to tell you I said no not going won't be no part of that right. yeah. wouldn't have mattered if it had been a shipload of gold out there that wouldn't have mattered to me right, right. that ain't going Mm. <laughs> you see, you don't use God's gifts right. in the wrong way. Right. That's right. I've tried my best to explain to ministers the same gift that I have to preach the gospel. I could sell fried ice cream to an Eskimo. Sure. I know what a gift is. You ever deal with me about buying something, you'll find out that I'll tell you my price and I'll never change. Because I didn't matter me, I'll give it to you before I change my price. Because I ain't going to use my gift. Not for doing something for the world. My gift is to preach the gospel. And sometimes I'm so embarrassed in my own staff. My sincerity is not enough. I need more sincerity. I need more, you know, humbleness before the Lord. I know that. But I don't know how gracious He is. Because He's never failed me yet. And it wouldn't matter to me to preach to 10 or to 10 million. It's just the same thing. Thank God for the truth. Right? Father, we just commit everything into your hands. And what we tried to say tonight, we've tried to make it to understand. We believe in you, Lord, and what you can do, that you can give the new birth right all at one time to somebody. We believe that. But we believe most of the time it doesn't come that way. It takes a time, and we definitely believe, Lord, in a definite time of justification. That when we repented of our sins, a definite time, just like it would be when the water broke of the woman. We believe in a definite time of sanctification, the cleansing our lives and setting us aside, just like it would be when the woman with the blood the issue that comes forth. We believe in a new birth. We believe in you, Lord. 
bringing your own life and letting it come and live inside of each and every one of us. We know that our lives are not worthy of anything. And forgive us, Lord, of all of the uncleanness and things that's within us. Sanctify us. Set us aside for you, Lord. Help us to be what you want us to be. We love you. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. You're dismissed. Remember the, the Bible study Saturday? And we're going to be talking on tithing. So we're going to tape it. And we've been taping it. If you want to hear these, I'm just saying, if you want to hear, we've been taping it. So all you got to do is ask Brother Joe. You can't come to the Bible study, ask Brother Joe. He'll make you a copy of any of the services. So we've been taping it. Now we may be playing and might call names at some time. It would be bad to get out, but that's all right. That's our own little private time of Bible study. Uh, so you just do that. All right, you're dismissed. Amen.